Hello everybody, my name is Matthew Grado and this is the integrated workplace analysis video presentation for my company, Cerner Corporation. So a brief background for Cerner, uh, exactly who we are. For those who don't know, we're an American supplier of healthcare information, technology solutions, services, devices, and hardware. We were founded in 1979 by Neil Patterson, Paul Gorb, and Cliff Ely. They sat together in um, in Loose Park in Kansas City, Missouri, and they knew there was going to be great opportunity between software and information technology. They didn't even know how big this Cerner would be, uh, but they knew there was there was great opportunities between software and IT. Uh, so a little bit about our vision, um, the vision at Cerner. We're, we're looking for a seamless and connected world where everyone thrives. We wanna make sure not only our associates are thriving, but also our clients as well, because if they're thriving, we're thriving. It's a win-win situation. So our mission is to rel relentlessly seek breakthrough innovation that will shape the healthcare of tomorrow. We're always looking for new and innovative ways that that's gonna be, um, that's going to affect healthcare. So that can either be with enhancements or maybe through the the cloud migration. We're we're looking for ways to make healthcare easier and uh, reduce errors as far as like clin clinicians or um, anybody in the healthcare systems. So a little bit of fun facts about Cerner. So we're located in our headquarters are in North Kansas City, um, in Missouri. Um, our NASDAQ symbol is CERN, in case anybody wants to invest in the Cerner stock. Uh, the 2019 revenue was 5.69 billion. Um, we have a little bit more, over more than 27,000 Cerner associates. I believe it's closer to 28,000 as of today. Um, we have over 500 patents worldwide and Cerner comes from the Latin word meaning to discern. Next, I'm gonna discuss Cerner and how we're organized. This is basically our operating model. Uh, this is the way we're going to go about achieving our goals and business objectives. So for that to happen, as you can see in the picture on the PowerPoint, everything is evolved around our clients. Um, so we need to make sure we're hitting each, each business unit here, all five of these. So the client relationships and the client success, as far as those relationships, that is something we wanna make sure that we're on good terms with the client, make sure that you know they're able to, we could build that trust and that that relationship with the, with the client when they're going through an upgrade. And so if, if we were able to do that, the client success, uh, if we're able to do that, it's gonna bring client success. And if they have success, we're gonna have success. So it's a win-win situation. We also wanna make sure that uh, as far as like the services and support that we're providing each services that they that they would like to that they might potentially be interested in and as far as the support when they are going through like an upgrade uh, if they're having an issue if they see a defect or if something's running slow that we are able to provide that support and get the appropriate team to be able to fix that issue for them as far as platforms and technology um, we try to offer the the newest code possible for the client, um, just so make sure that they're on the latest updated code, so everything's running smoothly. Um, and as far as like enhancements itself, we want to make sure that we're finding every every enhancement that's going to help be beneficial to their workflow. Um, as far as products, there's numerous products out there that Cerner offers the that we can offer the client. Uh, there's anything as far as like registration or to like anything from like prescribing controlled substances, anything out there, whatever meets their workflow and they're interested in, we want to make sure that we're providing that to the client as well. As far as marketing, this is more as far as like the client satisfaction part. Uh, so if everything goes smoothly and everything goes great, uh, they'll usually fill out a survey and when they fill out that survey and say it's like out of five, they give us a five. That's just going to be uh, great marketing for Cerner because other other clients are going to look at that. Other healthcare systems are going to be like, OK, Cerner provides value for the clients. They've established a good relationship. So maybe we should use them or maybe we should take on more services because it looks like they can handle all of our workflow. Potential key issues as far as organizational culture. Um, 
as far as the culture, I'm going to take into um, like COVID because it's it's affected everybody here. But before that, I feel like the culture at Cerner was top notch. Um, it was fantastic. And I still I feel like they've done a fantastic job uh, every, with everybody being remote. That, that's for sure. But this is something we might want to keep an eye on. So it's a potential key issue. Uh, so we must continue to foster a culture of continuous feedback, making sure everybody's on the same page. Uh, make sure that we're meeting on uh, like a daily basis or uh, at least with your team and just trying to get feedback as to thing, how things are going. So the cultures, again, like uh, prior to the pandemic, it was it was a lot easier. You could walk over to the like your colleague's desk and ask them a question about an issue you might be seeing because they might have seen that before. Uh, so that that just made it easier. Yeah. And as far as like your team itself. Uh, we were able to establish a lot of relationships or build on those relationships with like happy hours or team activities, anything from going to like Royals game or just doing like a volleyball night group kickball thing, anything that would just kind of build on those relationships. Uh, but I think one thing we need to do is continue to invest in those relationships, even though we're remote. Uh, we kind of do that already as far as like our daily syncs. Uh, we meet once a day in the morning, just discuss if anything's going on, just kind of check in with everybody. We also have one on ones with our manager, which we do bi weekly. Uh, it's a good time to, you know, try to establish your short and long term goals. Uh, and this kind of helps with the annual review process. So there's no surprises. Um, if you know how you've been doing all year long, it's just going to make that process a lot easier. And uh, one thing I always heard is teams can accomplish more than an individual ever could achieve alone. Um, that's that's always going to be true. Um, the more people that are involved in the project and the more people that are coming together to work, it's going to it's going to be a lot easier and more efficient. Um, so we need to continue to coach, build trust, and evaluate performance, uh, even though we're all remote right now. Another potential key issue as far as when it comes to motivation, and motivation is kind of a tricky one because not, um, not one thing is going to motivate all employees. Um, this is going to vary depending on the, on the person itself, but it's the manager's job to try to figure out what are the short and long-term goals for that employee. Um, for example, if an employee is not really motivated by the compensation, but uh, finds value in other in other benefits, that money kind of loses its power. Um, so you want to try to find those benefits that are going to help keep talent around. Uh, some of the things I listed here that I find great value at Cerner, which is the Cerner daycare, uh, the paternity leave, which is the four weeks paid uh, per calendar year. That was nice to have when my my daughter was born a year ago. Tuition assistance, which I'm using now to uh, go back to school and get my MBA. Uh, Operation Safe, which is a volunteer, um, any type of volunteer work that Cerner offers that you're able to be a part of. That's always nice for people to feel like they're making a, um, a difference in the community. And there's also like five. I found this article with Forbes and it was five ways managers should value their employees. Um, the first one was just value their ideas. Everyone wants to make sure that their ideas are being valued. I feel like that's almost common sense there. Uh, but as far as valuing their work, we want to make sure our work is um, being valued, that we're doing something that's making a difference every day. We want to make sure we're valuing our time, that our time is important, value our ability. We want to make sure that the manager has some type of trust in us and that the manager should just value them as people. Just get to get to know them and just ask them questions and try to establish a relationship with the employee. Uh, that seems to go a long way. Uh, it makes it seem like they actually care about the person. And um, when you're able to build that relationship, uh, the associate's going to tend to uh, give a little bit more effort as far as uh, any type of project that they'll be working on. Another potential key issue as far as when it comes to communication is email overload. Um, I'm on a lot of distribution lists and get a lot of unnecessary emails. Um, so people spend about a third of their time in the in the office reading and answering emails, and only 30% of those emails are are 
not urgent or not important at all uh, just because you're on that distribution list. I was always told if it's something that's urgent, uh, we use Microsoft Teams. So um, if somebody was just to send me an IM directly, um, just to let me know that it is urgent, like, hey, can you take a look at this? I need you to uh, see what's going on there. I have it right in front of me instead of it being lost in an email somewhere else because I might have taken a few PTO days and it came back and I have to go through two to 300 emails or however many. As far as uh, making sure, as far as communication that we're using technology, uh, Microsoft Teams, again, is the, is the communication service that we use. Uh, as far as client calls, they, they made it, they've made it easier as far as like the chat feature and recording, recording meetings or allowing others to take control. Um, those are always good features as far as the, as far as communication between clients, especially with, uh, some of like the multicultural communication. I have some international clients and I have some teams that are in India when we're, cause when it's, when it's night here, it's day there and they're working and, uh, vice versa. So this has helped with a lot of the language barriers. I've had um, like Australian clients and uh, UK clients where that language barrier is kind of difficult to understand at times, but I'll just tell them to post it in the chat or I'll record it and so I can get the right communication across. Uh, so yeah, that's that's been a that's been a lifesaver at times with Microsoft Teams. So it's helped with those with those language barriers. And next is the Cerner Action Plan, and this is the Organizational Client Success Plan Q4 for 2020, and this has to do with the Upgrade Center. I'll kind of walk through this data a little bit here. Um, as far as the client satisfaction, so anything, the target here was 4.65, so we want to have anything uh, higher than that 4.65. So Q2, it was shown 4.65. 8.9, which is very well. Q3 dropped a little bit at 4.7, and Q4 was 4.73, but it's still all above 4.65, so the client satisfaction looks like uh, we're on track there. As far as the project quality, this is the number of defects that we have during an upgrade. Uh, so our target uh, was the 0.13. Um, so anything below that means we're having less and less defects, which is good. So Q2 was at 0 0.09, then Q3 0 0.08, then 0 0.09 again for Q4. So that's all look like we're meeting all our metrics there. And as far as the ACS, the upgrade um, in CSS, uh, so this is just the, the annual client survey. Um, it didn't look like there was a target that they set for the year, but they only recorded for Q4, but it looks like everything was on track is there as well. Um, as far as the client success summary, um, with greater than 80% of the Millennium Upgrade project share and the MPS pulse over 60, uh, the Upgrade Center was positioned to make a continuing and frequent positive impacts across a large portion of the client base. So it just by just by meeting uh, these metrics here, it just shows that we're providing value for the client. And if we continue that for 2021, we'll have another successful year. So the overall analysis for Cerner, um, these are things that we need to continue to do and ways we can go about accomplishing those. So things we need to continue to do, uh, the first is to provide value. And that's by just keeping our metrics up, making sure those defects are low, uh, making sure client satisfaction is high. The second thing would be to maintain relationships. And these would both be internal and external. So internal is maintaining those relationships with our teams, uh, making sure that we're having uh, like those team syncs and we're meeting with one another on a daily basis. And external would be as far as any time the client reaches out, uh, maybe sends us an email or wants us to look into an issue, make sure we're being responsive and uh, making sure we're looking into that issue. Uh, third thing is maintain an organizational culture. So again, this goes back to those syncs, the team activities, happy hours, and these all can be done virtually. Um, we've had uh, started every other Friday where we, we do a team activity with one another and it's all done virtually. 
or uh, once a month we still have like a happy hour at like 4:30 right before the day is about to end and uh, but you have to provide your own beer that's the only, that's the only <laughs> bad part about it not free your beer anymore but um, it's still able to keep us all all within that culture um, and the last thing is to keep associates happy. And again, this is more than just compensation. You have to find what drives the associates. So the manager needs to find those short and long-term goals and just make sure that they're they're meeting with associates and seeing what, what drives them. Uh, I think that's the most important thing is just be able to have that feedback with your, with your manager and uh, so they can help you accomplish those goals. This is just a list of my references that I use throughout the video presentation. Again, thank you for your time.